when we turn our mind toward the Guru and through his teachings, this is very important, through his teachings, when we come to realize that our very life owes its existence to that power. So when that power has given this life, that power will know how to navigate the whole thing. So this is this can be termed as Guru's grace. Because then the onus of running the our life rests on him, not on us. Advanced stage. Very advanced stage, very difficult. Because we have not still handed over. We might be doing so many spiritual practices. We may do, be doing Ramnam, Bhajans, Swadhyay, Satsang. We may be also observing some Brothas. So many things we may be doing. But still this cardinal, this vital aspect, you know, that he is behind, he has, he has given us this life. Until such time, this me and mind puts a barrier in realizing it. So the moment we start realizing, when the, when the Guru says, outer Guru says, that you owe your life to him. That is why we were just sharing to one of our friends. Unless you link yourself with the author of your being, your life is in vain. Papa bluntly says that. So what does it mean? Unless I become aware, that is the purpose for which he has sent me here, no? I have defined my life from starting from me and mine. Whereas this life was started not by this me and mine. Me and mine was not there when I was in the swarm of a seed. When he caused my parents to deposit the seed in my mother's womb, I was not there. Blunt truth. And so he is the cause. The first cause. Papa used to say as first cause. Swami Chirmiyanji used to mention it as uncaused cause. A, a, an absolute cause which is not subject to cause and effect theory. For everything else, there is a cause and effect theory. That is why it, cannot, it is beginningless, endless. It can't be defined, inexplicable. All those attributes we say, you know. Because beyond certain level, we cannot go. There should be a starting point somewhere. So he, he is the starting point of every one of our life. When that is understood, that means the, uh, the, the onus, the responsibility of running this life is vested in him and not in my assumed personality. You and I, when we hear this, intellectually we can understand, but we cannot experience it. Why, you know? Right from our impressionable age, we have developed this, that the, I am the starting point of my life. And it has helped me also. Not that it was a foolish decision. God made me to feel that up to certain level. You become ambitious, you become, uh, you, you try to have a target in your life. So many things are there, no? And you try to achieve it, you bring out excellence in you, expertise in you. So you are convinced that you, you are the starting point. When it doesn't work well, then you start thinking. So uh, now the, the whole thing is Guru's grace means we become aware of the we become aware of the creator, the starting point of our life. So that the moment I be, not become intellectually aware, experientially aware, then the sense of individuality hands over lock, stock, and barrel to that principle, which is what is called surrender. That we can say that is Guru's grace. Now coming to the self-effort, all of us have been given a limited freedom through the feeling of sense of individuality. It has its purpose for all the way, various Vyavaharic thing. this in sense of individuality should be there. Otherwise no activity will spring forth. Everybody will be in you know, Brahmarine. They will sit, that's all. That is why this ignorance of our own nature is given to us. Anadi, avidya, anirvachya. 
this ignorance of my own real self is anadi beginning us and why did he do that then only he can run this he wanted to have the uh, jagat so uh, papa used to say when he wanted to uh, run the jagat he has to bring so many actors in it with so many assignments and they should not easily connect themselves with the origin the moment they connect with the origin they will skip they will not do what is required of them so that is why this is also beginningless and the time he chooses to call all his creation one by one at the time appointed by him that is where you no know, we see the awakening starts through a guru through a book through a hearing through something you know through an incident ramana bhagavan did not meet anybody ramana bhagavan one incident so he started going deep and that was the awakening and he was because god will that he uh, probably he must have done everything before his previous birth and only a last lap of his uh, last life he must have something so that he might have lingered to this birth and so in his very very early life 12 years or 13 years but in many other cases in papa has written when he met gandhi ji in 1920 at a distance some some something in a explicable feeling he had and that we then he named it as the first spiritual touch like that you know, in mataji's case when mataji met to papa in 1928 she has met so many people but this awakening had not come As soon as she saw Papa, she could understand she is my father, mother, guru. So like that, there are mysteries. We can't say it should be like this. It will not be like this. No. Swami Vivekananda as Narendra Nath when he went to Bhagwan Ram Krishna Paramahamsa, he did not know anything. He went as a critic. But the first question he asked: Have you seen God? And spontaneously, Bhagwan replied, "Yes, that was the instrument with us." Because to him, it was an imagination. No God was, as all of us had felt at one stage or another. So when somebody says, and a, and a person who's unknowingly we establish a link, we don't have to doubt our rationality or logical thinking does not come. When he said, "Yes, I have seen," that was enough. <coughs> so it is, when we are trying to think about it, Guru's grace means we, as we understand now when we go through. Uh, it is not that the physical, physically it is there, of course, no doubt. But if those who have served physically need not necessarily be the recipient of this awakening. It serves to some extent, no doubt. Papa or anybody who keeps on telling that unless you serve them with the impersonal feeling. So the impersonal aspect is brought to you through a personal form. Agreed. But when we start revering that personal form, we have to link ourselves with the impersonal aspect in it. Bluntly, Papa says we revere a person not because of his physical this thing. Because of the ideal he represents, otherwise he is also like any ordinary person. Na? The limitation of the body is still there. Limitation of the mind is still there. Everything is there. So long as he is an embodied self, all these characteristics will be there. Disease or what you call hang, uh, uh, hunger, hunger or thirst, every anything, whatever that is happening to anybody, that will happen to them also. So it is not the body or the physical frame that is impressing us. The ideal represented through the physical is a large heartedness, is meticulous care and concern, is concern for everybody, is simplicity, is self denial, is reliance on a higher power, not on any puny, on the puny intellect. Like all those things, when we start watching, think the ideal, ideal here represents. 
is what matters. There is an article in Divine Life, if you have got the book, Ideal in Person, where he clearly makes us aware. So the right concept of Guru comes from understanding the ideal represented, the impersonal aspect represented through the personal form. And we do revere, we do serve the physical form with this bhavana. During our satsang, we have many a times we have repeated this, that when Puja Swamiji was serving Papa, a day when he, he himself shared this with us, How to, how to stop attaching, getting attached to your body, Papa? Something like that he asked. So then Papa said, no, see Ramba inside. So Papa, Swamiji was still then seriously thinking about it, how to make it a reality. Then he said, the uh, methodology he used to ask, morning and night he used to do pranams. As soon as he sees Papa in the morning, as soon as he retires, from everything after seeing Papa. These two times he used to prostrate. So then he will close his eyes and this prayer, not vocal, not vocal, mental prayer. I am prostrating before the nameless, formless, indwelling, or pervading reality whose presence has been made known to me through this form. I am prostrating before the nameless, formless, indwelling or pervading reality whose presence has been made known to me through this form. So that means he was able to revere the form at the same time recognizing the formless. So, so when, why did we ask? He will make us to ask. That is how the mysterious functioning will take place. So, Guru's grace means becoming aware of his presence within us. And self-effort is with the limited freedom. Even to do the self-effort, you know, we have to have his grace. But from the individual standpoint, we say it is self-effort. It is not that we are, we are deceiving ourselves. Honestly, we feel it is our self-effort. Finally, we will come to know even to make a self-effort. We need him, you know. Swami. We need him. Yeah. Yeah. Because we, we try to define him as the, as the life force, intelligence, awareness, consciousness. Then it should be there, you know. Mm -hmm. ah. Yes, Swamiji. But let us not now confuse. We are in the plane of sen in, in sense of individuality. And we mm -hmm. feel, we have a field to put in our effort. We will put that effort. Mm. We will not suddenly jump and sit on a higher platform and say that even for that, he has to do that. At the moment, we are not sure. sure. We are sure. From our platform, whatever we do is self-effort. So now, uh, for example, the Mamana session, for example. When he has given us a prompting through somebody, we try to take it up and all pursue it. Ultimately, it is all coming from him. But that stage we have not reached now. And let us not put ourselves in the state straight away. So the uh, self-effort and the guru, at the moment, yes, there is, there is a self-effort, purusharta. Because our, we are all embodied self with all the limitations. Just like we are doing everything. Suppose you want to come to ashram, you do the planning, you know, you book the ticket. You elaborately equip yourself with so many things. You don't bring in God there, you only... Then at that time, though God is there, you are not aware that it is God. You still feel you are planning, you are arranging everything. And from that level, you are managing everything and it's all right. But ultimately, when we realize, we know that even the planning, even the ticket booking, even the equipping of yourself is all because he ordained. At the moment, if we say that, he is only intellectual. So, in this present way, Whatever we are prompted, we should be grateful to him that he has prompted us to do it, he has facilitated us to do it, and we try to bring in through our self-effort. 
this should we we should keep on thinking about it let us not immediately put place ourselves on a higher platform which we have not still achieved, attained we have understood that god is behind everything but we have not realized to us it is a it is it is a given to us 